so it was quite interesting what you were saying that women are somehow more courageous. And so why um, are you saying this and can you make some examples? Uh, yes, um, for example, uh, I will be screening a film called uh, Men on the Bridge. And it's a film about the um, informal economy of uh, people who sell things uh, on, the, um, on the Bosphorus Bridge that links uh, European side of Istanbul with the Asian side. It's the informal economy, so it's basically a proletaria that has no protection, that lives from day to day. And uh, it is informal economy, and so it is, it is in the domain of the illegal. They are not selling illegal substances, but they don't have the permit. They are outside yeah. the, the, the formal sphere. Yeah. Yeah. But at the same time, there is a relationship with the police with them. And so the filmmaker uh, whose name is Asle Özge and she uh, decided to make a documentary film. And then uh, about about this um, this universe uh, that is often overlooked that is uh, practically invisible. Uh, even though it is very prominent, you, it's not that you cannot see it, but you see it and you don't think about it, or it doesn't feature in the mainstream uh, discussion or representation of uh, Istanbul today. And uh, she decided to make a documentary film, and the more she uh, researched that universe, uh, she decided to actually make a, f a fiction film, but the form uh, t t the two characters that she focuses, the film, sorry, the film is built on three characters. Two uh, men who sell things and a policeman. The policeman could not play himself in the film, obviously. And uh, so they, she had to hire an actor. And at the same time, she was inspired to tell more stories. Uh, to really reflect that universe, but the two characters, the two uh, people who, the two men who sell things, play themselves in the film. This uh, form that really lives between uh, documentary and fiction is not a common form uh, in uh, mainstream cinema. It is, um, a, it is basically an artist or an essay documentary or an, a documentary that is unusual. Um, I mean, it's not totally unknown in the world, but uh, it, it is a, it, uh, she is taking a risk uh, with form and, more importantly, she is uh, diving into a world uh, that is usually invisible and, you know, frowned upon or considered illegitimate. This is one film. Another film is called uh, Merry Go Round uh, by Ilksen Basarir or Basharir, I don't know. Um, and uh, it is a story, it's a fiction film and it's a story of incest. Incest is really very rarely dealt with in Turkish cinema. It's regarded as a taboo. You also have to keep in mind that uh, for the past few years, the um, AKP uh, party has uh, won election, municipal elections in Istanbul, but also is the ruling party at the moment. And it is a very socially conservative party. It is also politically and economically not conservative, but profoundly neoliberal. But let's say that uh, at least in terms of uh, social values, it is very conservative. So to make a film about incest is a very daring uh, choice. Um, there is also a film about uh, a documentary film called Beginnings by a filmmaker called Somnur Vardar. And Somnur uh, decided to follow, um, to film a project that follows Turkish and Armenian youth as they visit uh, villages that were inhabited by Armenians in Turkey. Uh, and so they, they basically revisit a site of memory, of traumatic and contested memory, and talk together as a fourth generation uh, of descendants 
uh, about the genocide, about trauma, about uh, uh, deniability, about, you know, it's a, it's a very, very painful and complicated issue. Uh, and there are small uh, initiatives by NGOs that are daring to, um, appro to broach the subject. It, I think it is even more courageous to make a film about uh, these small initiatives because otherwise they just remain, you know, in, in known to a very small number of people. When you make a film, you give it another dimension. Two more questions, uh, Rasha. And what about uh, the, the, crea the creative situation in your in Lebanon? Um, what about the artistic and the cultural life uh, in your country? I mean, uh, the um, uh, strange thing about me is that I uh, live here and I'm from here. Yeah. Uh, but I don't work here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. However, no, no. However, I, I really want to uh, talk about what my friends are doing. That is amazing. So I can tell you that in the beginning of April, there was a fantastic uh, experimental music festival uh, called Irtijal. I think it was the 11th or the 12th edition. Um, it, is, um, one, it is one of two uh, events uh, in the Arab world dedicated to experimental music. Uh, it is international and it's really special. And they have done an amazing job of building an audience. Uh, right now, there is a festival of contemporary dance called Bipod. And um, the, besides the fact that it's also a very good festival, the nice thing about it is that it travels in the region. It travels to Jordan, a nearby country, neighboring country, and it travels to Palestine. Mm -hmm. 